Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Mr. Norcia, our superintendent, and Mr. Gorski, our principal, we'd like to welcome everybody to the 2021 Winter Sports Awards Ceremony. We'll be doing the ceremony virtually again, like we did in the fall, due to the pandemic. This winter, like the fall, was full of highs and lows for our athletes, but due to our great commitment to excellence, our athletes performed like true cutters, both on and off the playing fields and in the classroom. The perseverance and sportsmanship our athletes displayed on a daily basis was very impressive to see. During tough times, our athletes performed well and developed strong relationships both with each other and with their coaches. Special thanks this winter to Mrs. Katz, Mr. LaCicero, Ms. Murata, Mr. Yaz, Mr. Volpe, Ms. Rockanova, Mr. Gould, our entire event staff here at the high school for all their hard work, commitment, and dedication to having this winter season go on as scheduled. At this point, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Gorski, who would like to welcome everybody to tonight's ceremony. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to the 2020-2021 virtual Winter Sports Awards for Fairlawn High School. I'd like to start out by thanking and recognizing our athletic department. Mr. Robinson, Mrs. Roman Katz, Mr. LaCicero, all of our coaches directors, advisors, assistants, everyone that worked so hard throughout the course of these seasons to give all of our student athletes the greatest possible chance to participate and compete. There weren't a lot of actual winter storms this winter in terms of snow and ice, but they weathered the storm of all of the pandemic-related issues that we faced. They planned and replanned and replanned again. And what they were able to do was put together seasons of competition and hopefully good and lasting memories for our student athletes and you, their families. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Dr. Batiste Bosco, one of our assistant principals, who has been instrumental in putting together all of these virtual awards and recognitions programs. These programs are a nice archive, not just for viewing now, but for viewing in the future as well. They capture the memories of this time and they can be seen over and over again by our community and by family members all over. Of course, the stars of the show are our student athletes. The way in which they represented our school, the way in which they balanced Zoom school in person, wherever they were, and all their responsibilities with their sport or activity, they truly are the leaders of our high school. What we wanted to do in these seasons was to provide every possible opportunity for our student athletes to do what they love and do best. You know, we had not one, not two, but three winter seasons this year. That's unprecedented like everything else in the pandemic. And we have memories here of things that we had never done before, but really turned out very well in the end. The way in which all the seasons were put together made sometimes historically fall sports become winter sports or spring sports become winter sports. That made for a scheduling nightmare at times, 
but I appreciate the way in which everyone came together, both families and our athletic department, to work together to make sure that every team and every group got the time they needed to prepare and do their best in each and every competition. Now, the winter is a season of short, cold, and dark days. These activities were a shining light amid all that. I hope that we're all able to reflect back on those, remember the good times that we had out on our courts and in every arena in which we practiced and played and hold on to those memories moving forward. It's been my true privilege to address each and every one of these virtual awards assemblies. I know that you join me in showing pride for the accomplishments of each of our student athletes and all of the adults that lead them. Finally, I want to thank you as families. You have been patient with us. You have been understanding. You've been flexible. You have really partnered with us as we have tried to do our very best to provide a safe and rewarding experience for our student athletes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Please enjoy the rest of the program. Stay well. Hope to see you again soon. So in a blink of an eye, it feels like the season has just come to an end. With our first competition being less than three weeks from our first practice, we know how much hard work we had to put into making this all happen. As a team, we practiced every day for hours, had multiple injuries, and together created a routine which is always done by a choreographer, which is very, very impressive. These girls showed what it meant to be on a team, work together, and truly love a sport. The talent, accomplishment, flexibility, and hard work shown this year could never be matched. This year was cut short, but every opportunity these girls had to show such a powerful routine, they did. I have never been so proud. I know how many months it takes to perfect a routine and how much blood, sweat, and tears literally come along with it. And these girls made it work every single time. With every adversity thrown their way, they powered through it. Truly, I am so proud to have coached such a talented, hardworking, and kind group of girls. A huge thank you to my assistant coach, Ashley Shorts. Ashley and I worked so hard to make this short season as enjoyable and successful as possible. I do not know what, would have done, what I would have done without her and her help this season, both keeping me calm and her great help. Also, thank you to the wonderful parents that showed so much support at every competition they attended. Fairlawn Cheer has always had an amazing support system that only seems to get better as the years go on. And a special shout out to Joanne Morata for always being there for me literally whenever I need anything. You are the best. And another thank you for the continued support, uh, support from Mr. Gorski, Mr. Robinson, and Mrs. Roman Katz. And now congratulations to our first time letter winners, uh, Darian Selowitz, Caitlin Welch, Welch, Sasha Gold, Jordan Bishop, Kendall McNamara, Taylor Johnson, Gian Barone, Gianna Brown, and Holly Katra. I will miss this team so much, and for my first year of coaching competition cheerleading, I will never forget you all. You'll have a special place in my heart. Uh, and now to the seniors. Um, Karina was the most unexpected flyer I've ever seen, but was so flexible and talented. She could literally, literally do any position you put her in. Michaela uh, was a captain, was such a talented cheerleader, with such a big heart for cheerleading. Ashley Tabor was such a talented cheerleader who showed great determination for her team. Kayla could always count on you to lead the team, helped me with anything I needed, and was an amazing back. Kylie, captain, was such a strong athlete who gave 
amazing suggestions, our routine would not have been so unique or great without her help. Sydney Gold, captain, was so talented and such a great role model for everyone on the team. Sydney was also so positive and calm even in times of panic. Maddie was such a strong base and cheerleader, I could put on her under anyone and she would make it work. Mackenzie was a great back and always had a great attitude about cheerleading and routine changes that happened very constantly this year. And now for the Cutter Award. So the Cutter Award goes to someone I could always count on to lead the team, be a role model, and help in any way I needed without me even asking. This girl was such a positive support system for every girl on the team and was someone anyone could turn to. She was such a talented cheerleader and athlete. Even though I only had the opportunity to coach her for one year, it was an absolute pleasure and I will miss her so much next year when I need someone to turn to for anything. Congratulations, Sydney Gold. And the MVP. The MVP award also goes to a girl who I could always count on to lead the team, be a role model, and help me build such an amazing routine. Seriously, without her, I the routine would have not came out the way it did. She really was such a great help. This girl knew what she was doing, and she was perfect at it all. An amazing athlete, role model, and cheerleader. You will be missed so much, especially by me and this program. Without you, I can't promise our routine would have turned out that good. You will be missed so much next year. Congratulations, Kylie McNamara. This is a great season and with every flip of a switch, the girls were able to do it and I couldn't have been any prouder to be their coach. And I'm looking forward to a, a more normal season next year. Bye. Hello, this is Coach Markman, the girls' bowling coach, and it is my pleasure to present to you this year's 2021 girls' bowling team. The ladies were able to finish top 10 in the county, led by MVP Krista Eskow, who made first team all-county for the fourth straight year, as well as first team all-league for the fourth straight year. Krista is the best girls' bowler in Fair One history and is a surefire Hall of Famer sometime down the road. I also would like to acknowledge Liz Berger, who as a junior had our second highest average, and along with Krista made us competitive in all our matches, and Liz was named first team all week this year. I would also like to acknowledge senior Amina Kareva, who was one of our captains, who provided strong leadership and commitment to the team, and she receives our Cutter Award for this year. In addition, I'd like to thank Miriam Ahmed, senior, for all her dedication and um, joy that she brought to the team and we are definitely going to miss her. Uh, the team looks forward to all our players who are returning next year which includes Dania Jung, 11th grader, Rebecca Pesak, 10th grader, Jacqueline Paradisio, 9th grader, Angelina Sainez, 9th grader, Alyssa Polacek, 10th grader, and Ella Yurovsky, 10th grader. And we hope to be strong uh, for years to come and I want to thank the ladies for all their hard work and commitment especially in a very 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 difficult year and a very difficult time um, but the season was really enjoyable and I'd also like to thank all the parents and Mr. Robinson and um, Ms. Roman Katz for all their support. Thanks again and have a wonderful summer and we look forward to seeing everybody next year uh, when we get back to normal. Thank you. Good evening, this is Mr. Miller, head coach for the boys bowling team. So our season this year, um, I thought it was fantastic. Again, this is my first year coaching bowling, so what do I know? 
Um, but I do know that we finished second in our league and we gave our league champion West Milford their only loss of the entire season. So I was pleasantly surprised. Now, our team was also had a really great dynamic. Um, we had strong leadership from our senior, Kyle Adley. We also had underclassmen who performed extremely well also. Morgan Fold, Aiden Tufford, Junior Nathan Coelho. And we, um, as I already mentioned, Morgan and Aiden, they're sophomores, so we've got a, a strong basis coming up. But we also had a, uh, a freshman contributor to our varsity team this year as well, Gabe Keelan. And it really took all five of, of uh, our teammates to, uh, to make this season as special as it was. So thanks again. I'd like to acknowledge the only senior on our team this year, Kyle Adley, for his contributions to our bowling squad. Just some honors that Kyle received this year. Um, he had the second highest average on our team with a 176. He also had the highest game bowled by a Fairlawn Cutter this season with a 288. Really a fantastic game. Kyle also earned all league second team honors and he was honorable mention for all county i'd like to congratulate our cutter award winner for boys bowling this season once again kyle adley for all the reasons i mentioned before um, in addition to just strong senior leadership uh, again, it was my first year to the, to the team, but it was his fourth, uh, and it made my job as a first-year coach for boys bowling extremely easy. Uh, he, I, I believe he epitomizes what it means to be a cutter. So again, congratulations to Kyle Adley, our boys cutter award winner this season. For our MVP, this individual is only a sophomore, but... Um, he certainly did not bowl like a sophomore. He had a 191 average with a high game of 256. This individual earned first team all league honors in addition to third team all county honors. So congratulations to sophomore Morgan Fold, this season's MVP. Um, I'd like to first and foremost thank the parents for entrusting me with your sons this season. It was a crazy season um, with the pandemic going on and the, the schedule changes at sometimes last minute. So I, I really appreciate your patience and your trust. I'd also like to thank the Board of Education, Principal Gorski and Athletic Director, Mr. Robinson for allowing me to coach boys bowling for my first season. I enjoyed every minute of it. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Ms. Roman Katz in the athletic department and Mr. Le Cicero, our athletic trainer, for his help as well. I know they put in a lot of time and I just wanted to uh, show my appreciation. Greetings Fairlawn Athletics community. My name is Joe Bonafetti and I'm the varsity coach for our Cutters Ice Hockey team. Before I share our season highlights, I would like to thank the many people that help get our Cutters on the ice each year. Principal Mr. Gorski, Athletic Director Mr. Robinson, Athletics Department Secretary and MVP Mrs. Diane Roman Katz, Mrs. Lori Rocanova at Transportation, Trainer Jason Le Cicero, and of course my assistant coaches Mr. Joe Forlini and Mr. Ryan Gazelle. While our program faced many challenges this season, our players and parents continue to push forward to provide our boys with an exciting and enjoyable experience. We finished the year with an 8-4 record and went 7-0 in our division, the Big North Patriot. This was the first time we won the division in over 10 years. We had big wins over Riverdale, Northern Valley Old Japan, and Paramus Catholic. One of the most exciting games came against Paramus Catholic 
when we had to play most of the first period without a goaltender. An extremely difficult task in hockey, our players worked together to fend off PC long enough to get our netbinder back. This was a prime example of the teamwork and dedication our squad had this year. It was an unbelievable win. This year we have three seniors leaving our program. Four-year varsity players, JT Hoffler, Michael Natanson, and Sam Skripko all devoted themselves to the success of the program over the past four years and we wish them the best of luck in the future. While we had so many players that contributed to our division title this year, we've decided to award junior Tyler Kobanski with the Cutter Award and Nicholas Steinberg as our MVP. Both players were first team all Patriot North and Nick was awarded third team all county. I'm extremely proud of the success our program has seen in the past two seasons and look forward to continuing to watch our players grow both on and off the ice. I would like to conclude by thanking our team parents for all of their support throughout the year. Stay healthy and I'll see you at the rink next season. This year's fencing season, as I'd imagine was true of all other sports this year, has been quite unusual. With the uncertainty of in-person play, the cancellation of all of our major tournaments, and the risk of illness, I was ready for a struggle. Yet, as I'm sure many other coaches have found, the students' dedication to their team and the desire to compete in any way possible led to a beautiful season full of smiles and several highlights. Our girls' team, which was comprised of many freshmen, took in a two to seven record. Our boys, four to four. One of our young men made first team all league. Liam Bass, but an 83% league record and 90% overall record. For second team all league, one of our girls, Casey Murray, took in a 73% league record and 78% overall record. For boys, Ronan Bass with a 78% league record and 87% overall record, Peleg Wolfson with a 100% league record, 89% overall record, Andrew Falberg with an 83% league record and 78% overall record. For honorable mention, with our girls, Sandra Almosawi with a 47% league record and 59% overall record. And for boys, Christopher Schmidt with a 50% league record and 57% overall record. Our season would have been incomplete this year without honoring our seniors.
On Epe, Mark Sine. On Foil, Sandra Almasali, Natalie Giamo, Gianna Baron, Fiona Lau, Joshua Rios, and Alexander Rosovich. On Sabre, Samantha Tai, Nico O'Neill, Christopher Schmidt, Jason Chenu, Gavin Hazan, and Spencer Siegelad. This year's Cutter Award for Girls goes to an individual who is the true definition of a student athlete. Samantha Tai held up the Sabre squad from the day she joined, a natural athlete who would never turn down a challenge. Sam's consistent positive attitude and energy rubbed off on everyone around her and often made it hard to believe that she was balancing college courses and helping at home to care for her siblings. Sam's selfless nature and kindness all around earned her this year's Cutter Award. This year's Cutter Award for Boys goes to a gentleman who I think has made the most personal growth from his freshman year. Spencer Siegeladdy has always pushed to improve, setting a goal to make and hold down varsity since the moment he joined. As a senior, Spencer's hard work paid off and earned him that spot. Yet this isn't what impressed me most about Spencer. It was that Spencer has, more than anyone, looked out for the well-being of everyone around him. There wasn't a day that Spencer wouldn't check in with his teammates and genuinely ask how they were doing. If anyone looked down, Spencer did everything in his power to cheer them up. More than that, if he thought anything was wrong, he would aim to fix it. This growth earns him this year's Cutter Award. For girls MVP this year, I'm proud to announce that the recipient is Sandra Almosali. Sandra's contributions to this team span four years of dedication. Although she strove to improve herself and her personal record, she always put the team first. Her drive to improve was not only a challenge to herself, but also a way to push her teammates to improve. She single-handedly recruited individuals over her four years that became permanent members of the team. One of her teammates sent me a message at the end of the season, pushing for her consideration for MVP, stating, Sandra works hard to manage this team, keep everyone in check, and help them. On top of that, she still makes time to practice and try new things. In over 10 years of coaching, I'd never received a recommendation for who to consider, proving the impact Sandra has made on this team. For Boys MVP, our recipient this year is Ronan Buffs. Ronan has been one of our most competitive and dedicated fencers since he started as a freshman. However, late last year, an injury took him out of the end of the season. Without the prospect of districts, state squads, or individuals, we decided excess strain was unnecessary. It would have been easy for Ronan to stop showing up. Yet Ronan proved that value isn't just about a winning record, it's about dedication to your team. Strange as it may sound, it was one of his teammates who reached out with this recommendation. This year in particular, Ronan has stepped up to help out his teammates, both emotionally and with our individual fencing. When it comes down to it, he's always been there when we need him. He could have easily stopped showing up when he had nothing personal to gain from it. But he was there every single day giving drills, lessons, and advice. Ronan really did it all this year and went the extra mile just to make sure we all succeeded. Hello, this is Coach Kelly from the Girls and Boys Swim Team. I want to start off with a special thank you to our Board of Education and Athletic Department, especially Mr. Robinson, Mrs. Katz, and Mr. LeCicero. With everyone's efforts, they allowed us to have a winter season, which at one point we were unsure if we were going to have that. Thank yous also go out to our parent reps, Mrs. Lyons and Mrs. Christensen, for live streaming our swim meets and for helping to make a special senior day. Thank you to Coach Bauman for all of her assistance during the season, and thank you to our swimmers for being so flexible this year. I'd also like to send out a special congratulations to other winter sports on their successful seasons. 
This was obviously a season like no other. Temperature checks. Limited numbers on the bus and in the pool kept us from having a full team of practices. Boys and girls teams swimming meets on different days and a schedule that kept being changed to numerous teams having to shut down. Through all this adversity, our Fairlawn swimmers show their resiliency to not only adapt, but be successful as well. Our high school swim team competed in the very tough Big North Liberty Division with highly competitive teams like Wayne Valley, Wayne Hills, Hackensack, and Ridgewood. Our girls team was three and two, with two losses being by only a few points. Our boys team was one and three and set a new school record in the 400 freestyle. Unfortunately, because of the state restrictions, we were not able to have a league and state playoffs, which we've become accustomed to being a part of the past few years. We do have some individuals who received all league honors. First team all league, freshman Katarina Sudentin, sophomore Alex Grokkin and Chris Lee, junior Leia Montalvo, seniors Camilla Mercado and Sophia Trigov. Second team all league, freshman Skylar Coleman, and honorable mention all league, sophomore Riley Bogus and junior Isabel Lyons. Again, thanks to all of our swimmers for their efforts and dedication to the Fairlawn Swim Team. Hopefully we'll see you in November for the 21-22 season. The Fairlawn Swim Team had six senior captains this year. Their leadership was outstanding under difficult circumstances. Our first senior captain, Mitch Lenevsky. A two-year varsity swimmer, so I'm butterfly and freestyle for us. He's going on to go to Tulane University in Louisiana. Our next boy captain, Kenneth Chung, a three-year varsity swimmer, so I'm breaststroke, the IM, and the freestyle events for us. He's going on to Stony Brook University in New York. Our third senior boy captain, Andrew Weisberger, three-year varsity swimmer. So mostly the freestyle events for us. He's going on to Universal Technical Institute in New Jersey. Our first girl captain, senior Emma Steinhardt, first year varsity swimmer. So in the freestyle events for us, is going on to school in Gonzaga University in Washington. Our next young lady, senior captain, Camilla Mercado, a four year varsity swimmer, swims breaststroke and freestyle for us. Finished her career as one of the top 10 in all-time scoring for the girls team. She's going on to Ramapo College in New Jersey. And our last senior captain, Sophia Trigub, a four-year varsity swimmer. So in the IM, the butterfly and the backstroke for us. She also finished her career in the top 10 all-time scorer for girls teams. And she's going on to continue her education at Rutgers Honors College in New Jersey. On behalf of the coaches and the rest of the members of the swim team, we wish all of our seniors the best of luck in college and beyond. The Fairlawn Swim Team Cutter and MVP Awards. The Cutter Award goes to two individuals who worked extremely hard and competed in any events that we have asked them to swim. They've shown consistent improvement and put the team first throughout the season. For the boys, our Cutter Award goes to Kenneth Chung, Sr. And for the girls, our Cutter Award goes to Junior Shoham Avda. Our MVP Award goes to two individuals who rarely lost an event and were consistently top scorers in each meet. For the boys, sophomore Chris Lee. And for the girls, senior Sophia Trigov. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brian McCourt, 
and I am the girls varsity basketball coach here at Fairlawn High School. I would like to begin tonight by thanking Mr. Robinson, Mrs. Roman Katz, and Mr. LaCicero for all their support during the most challenging season we have ever faced. Special thank you to all the parents and guardians for the opportunity to coach your child here at Fairlawn High School. I'd like to thank the entire girls basketball coaching staff, freshman coach Andrew Berdinger, junior varsity coach Don Edner, and varsity assistant coach Mike McQuaid. Thank you for all your hard work. None of this would have been possible without your help. I would like to thank our team statisticians, Jordan Snyder, Lara Crown, and Brooke Snyder. Our girls freshman team this season went undefeated with impressive wins against Riverdale and IHA. Our JV team had a record of six and four with two big wins against Wayne Valley and West Milford. The varsity team had a record of one and six, picking up an impressive victory in the last game against Lakeland Regional. This was the most unique season any of us have ever been a part of, coaching or playing, and I'm sure none of us will ever forget. Our season started delayed, and who would have thought that our first official practice was actually on center rec turf field, so we would have enough practices in to play our first game in February. It was not the most ideal situation, but this group of players always had a positive outlook and gave their absolute best. After only five days of practice on a basketball court and a snow day added to the mix, we played our first game of the season on Wednesday against Passaic Valley. While it was our first game, it was their fifth. We lost the game by two points, 32 to 30, while shooting 13 out of 85. We had an opportunity to tie and or win at the buzzer, but the shot did not fall. We then played IHA the next day, where we gave them a challenge in the first half, but they pulled away in the second. We then played Riverdale for a third game in four days. We then went on pause for two weeks and came back for the last week of our season to play four games in five days. The cards we were dealt this past season were very difficult, but this group of players, this team, never gave up. We played a total of seven games and had eight practices. We ended the season on a high note, winning our last game of the season against Lakeland 39-34. We led from the first possession of the game and it was great to see the smiles on their faces. Big games for Haley Conklin and Melanie Pizer with 11 and 10 points respectively in their final high school basketball game. Every player on this team contributed so much to this program both on and off the court. Here are the team stats for each player. Mia Adler, 2.3 points per game, 2.3 rebounds per game, 1.3 assists per game, 1.4 steals per game. Haley Conklin, 7.3 points per game, 2.9 rebounds per game, 1.9 assists per game, 1.9 steals per game. Callie Conley, 0.2 rebounds per game. Amanda Duran, two points per game, two rebounds per game, one assist per game, and one steal per game. Melanie Malkazian, 3.3 points per game, two rebounds per game, 0.4 assists per game, 0.4 steals per game. Carly Marks, 3.4 points per game, 3.6 rebounds per game, 0.3 assists per game, 0.4 blocks per game, 0.9 steals per game. Melanie Pizer, 2.6 points, 2.6 points per game, 1.7 rebounds per game, 0.4 assists per game, and 0.1 steals per game. Sophia Pickett, 3.3 points per game, 3 rebounds per game, 2.3 assists per game, 1.3 steals per game. Romy Shalom, 1.1 points per game, 0.9 rebounds per game, 0.4 assists per game, 1.2 steals per game. And lastly, Melissa Viette, 3.4 points per game, 5.7 rebounds per game, 0.9 assists per game, 1.1 blocks per game, and 0.7 steals per game. As evidenced by these stats, every single one of these 10 players brought their absolute best every single day. And if this season taught us anything, it's always take the court like it's the last time you're gonna be on it. And this group really brought their best and as a coaching staff, we are so proud of them. And we know that the learning lessons they will take with them for the rest of their life. This season built character for them. And we know again, that they're going to be extremely successful and look back at this 
as a great opportunity. Here at the 2020 and 2021 Big North Independence Division recipients. Congratulations to Mia Adler for achieving honorable mention all conference. Congratulations to Melissa Viette for achieving second team all conference. Congratulations to Sophia Pickett for achieving second team all conference. And congratulations to Haley Conklin for achieving first team all conference. This year, we had six seniors in our program. These six seniors have been playing basketball since they were very young and have always represented this program and community with class. They helped our program accomplish feats last year that have not happened since 2009 with both a state and county tournament win. This group of seniors served as great role models for the youth of Fairlawn and they will be greatly missed. We had more practices this year on Zoom but they made the best of everything thrown in their path, and we know they will be extremely successful in their future endeavors. Our first senior player to be recognized is number three, Amanda Duran. Amanda has been a member of our program for all four years. She has been a starter the past two seasons. She's one of the hardest working players to take the court for us, and was one of our most fierce defenders. Amanda will be attending Florida State University next year. Our next player, number four, Kelly Connolly. Kelly has been a member for all four years and has been a great teammate, both on and off the court. Kelly always gave her absolute best. She always made her opponent in the game or practice always earn their points. Kelly will be attending the University of Rhode Island next year. Next player, number five, Mia Adler. Mia has been a member of the program for all four years and has such a high basketball IQ. She was always ready when her name was called and gave everything she had. She had a lot of big plays for us this past season with great defense and led our team in deflections. Mia will be attending Rutgers University. Our next senior athlete is number 22, Melanie Pizer. Melanie was a member of our program for all four years. She was one of the best shooters on our team this past season. She was always ready when her name was called and she scored a career high 10 points in her final high school basketball game. Melanie will be attending Cutstown University next year. Next senior athlete, number 14, Haley Conklin. Haley was a member of our program for all four years. She's been at the varsity level since her sophomore year. Haley is one of the hardest workers. She's never afraid to shoot the ball, and she is a true leader. Haley has led by example these past three years. She was our leading scorer this past season and truly was a team player. Haley was one of the captains for our team this past season. She'll be attending the University of Scranton next year. And our last senior athlete, number 10, Sophia Pickett. Sophia has been a member for the varsity team since her freshman year. She's been a varsity starter since her sophomore year. She's been a huge contributor to this program. She's been our point guard and best defender the past three years. She leaves big shoes to fill. Each game we played, she defended the other team's best player and held them to their lowest point totals of the season. Sophia was one of our captains this past season. Sophia will be attending Rutgers University next year. 2020-2021 Girls Varsity Basketball Cutter Award winner. This player is someone who is a team player, someone who cares more about winning the game than her own personal success. She has been our point guard the last three years, served as one of our team captains this year, and does a phenomenal job getting everyone involved. If someone's confidence is down, she would always go and be there for her teammates. During practices, she would always help her teammates better understand plays and teach them a game of basketball. She has been our best defender the past three years. All you have to see is the box score for the other teams, and you'll notice their best score scored one of their lowest totals against us. This player has received all conference awards the past three years. Second team all conference as a sophomore, first team all conference as a junior, and second team all conference as a senior. She has been a member of the varsity team since her freshman year, and I know that she will make a great basketball coach someday. 
This year's Girls Basketball Cutter Award winner is senior Sophia Pickett. Two thousand twenty, two thousand twenty one, Varsity Girls Basketball MVP. The MVP of the two thousand twenty, two thousand twenty one girls basketball team is our team's leading scorer. She averaged seven point three points per game, two point nine rebounds per game, one point nine assists per game, one point nine steals per game. She truly did everything for us. She did not take possession off on either side of the ball. She served as one of the team captains this year. Over the course of our final four games, this player led our team in points with 10, 11, 8, and 11 points, respectively. Over the course of the last three years, she has earned conference recognition, sophomore year honorable mention, junior year second team all-conference, and senior year first team all-conference. This player was a true leader and did all she could for her teammates. At the end of practice, she was constantly staying putting in extra work, working on her dribbling, and putting up hundreds of shots. She always had a never quit attitude and it had a positive effect on everyone in the program. Similar to our Cutter Award winner, we truly believe that this year's MVP has a bright future in the game of basketball and will make a great coach someday. This year's MVP is senior Haley Conklin. Just like every other team in the state, this season for the Fairlawn Boys Basketball Program was like no other. Normally starting right after Thanksgiving, this season didn't begin until February. COVID resulted in virtual school, school closings resulted in very little practice time, and the game schedule became very limited and constantly changing. The snow also was an obstacle and didn't make it any easier for us. It made for quite a year. And yet this team persisted. The varsity lost about 90% of their points from the previous year. The limited practice time severely hindered every player's opportunities to get better, learn the plays, and develop chemistry. Most practices we had less than 10 players, which made it difficult to improve on a daily basis. I am sure this could be said for everybody else as well, but it really affected our young and inexperienced players like most of this year's team was. So for me, the results in our record were irrelevant this year. The effort and resiliency of the boys in this program was truly admirable. We only had five weeks of a season, but to be able to come to practice every day with this group and finally feel some sense of normalcy was really meaningful and needed for myself included. Looking back, I really feel fortunate that we were able to experience that. The 2021 boys basketball team was all about overcoming adversity, and you all achieved that. For that, I commend every one of you. The freshman and JV teams were also able to play this season, and although they both dealt with the same obstacles, I feel very optimistic about the future of this program. Congratulations to all the players on playing this season during these difficult times. We have a lot to be excited about heading into next season. Although I only coached him for two seasons, Josh Hupko is without a doubt one of the most coachable players I've ever had. He did whatever was asked of him, had an incredible work ethic, and ended up being one of the players we relied on the most this season. He is such a mature and respected individual, and despite only being in the program for two years, he is definitely going to be missed. 
Congratulations on a great career and good luck in Texas where he will be going to college next year. Jasper Timboken always played with energy and enthusiasm and was always going to give you everything he had. You can never question his heart and his work ethic and I always knew I could count on him for anything. He was such a player to have in the program these last four years and we are really going to miss him. Basketball withstanding, he is such a great person and I know he's going to be successful in whatever he decides to do. Thank you for a great four years, Jasper Tavogan. During their sophomore and junior seasons, Jaden Moran and Julian Reyes were integral parts to two of the most successful seasons in Fairlawn history. Although they both succeeded in supporting roles during those seasons, they are both looking forward to their roles expanding during their senior years. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we are only able to see a small sample of that this season. I will still look back on both of their high school careers very fondly as they both brought something different and unique during their four years here. I know it's not the senior year that they envisioned, but I am very proud of all their accomplishments. Jaden Moran is by far one of the most well-liked players on our team and by the coaching staff. He is extremely coachable and is exactly the kind of player and person a coach wants in his program. He does everything that is asked of him, and he helped me and this program in so many ways. He was such a great asset to have on the sidelines and in practice. He communicated so well on defense and knew basically every position on offense. I really enjoyed having Jaden be part of the program these last four years. He is of the highest character and we will truly miss him. I know that whatever he ends up doing with his life, he will be great at it. Congratulations, Jaden, on receiving this year's Cutter Award. It has been an absolute pleasure having Julian Reyes as part of the boys basketball program these past four years. His continued development and growth every year was really enjoyable to watch, and I am really proud of the player and person he has become. Statistics and accomplishments aside, he was a great leader, a great teammate, and extremely coachable. It took him a few weeks to find his rhythm, but once he did, he went on a tear the last few weeks of the season, scoring over 20 points in every game. Julian led our team this season in every statistical category, points, rebounds, steals, assists, and blocks. I will certainly miss everything that he's done for the program, and I wish him luck as he takes the next step in his life. Congratulations on a great career, Julian Reyes, in being named this year's Most Valuable Player. Good evening. This is Coach Aguilar. I'd first like to thank our administration for supporting us and getting us through a difficult time. Without you, we would have never made it through the winter season. Secondly, I'd like to thank our parents. You were dedicated, especially during these difficult times where you were not allowed to travel to away matches. Thank you for everything and thank you for having your sons come to all of our matches and be a part of the team. I'd also like to thank my staff, Coach Pizakane and Coach Trimbetti. Both of you supported us and supported our athletes throughout this time and were there every day. I would have been truly lost without you guys. I'd like to thank all of you for this. A little bit about our season. We ended up going four and six and were able to have 10 dual matches, which is great for the type of season this was. We kept it close in many matches and fought throughout the entire year. Some of our best wins were against Wayne Hills and Wayne Valley. Wayne Valley was a special match as it was the first time we were ever able to wrestle outside on the football field. The athletes did a great job throughout the time, especially during difficult conditions being outside in the sun. Overall, we finished third in the league behind Passaic Valley and Lakeland. It was a successful season. We worked hard and did a great job coming down the end. Individually, we had two athletes qualify for the Regents, Matt Murray and Jake Shiner, both of whom competed very hard the entire season, and I'm truly proud to see their resilience and effort throughout. I'd now like to take this time and individually congratulate my seniors. 
First up is Isaiah Cunalera. Isaiah wrestled 113 and did a wonderful job for us, ending up with second team all league. Next up I had Joe Fojon. Joe Fojon jumped around and wrestled wherever we needed him. He wrestled 170 and 182. He's been a star member of the varsity team for the last few years and has always put the effort in. I have never seen somebody put as much effort into the sport as he has. And thank you. Josh Kang. Josh Kang is another senior. He came out this year for the first time. He fought hard and progressed the entire year. His best match came during our last dual meet. Next up is Parker Talman. Parker Talman is going to be our Cutter Award recipient. Parker did everything I asked of him. From last year to this year, my two years here, he was a leading example on our team. He led by example, worked as hard as he could, and did the best he could. I thank you, Parker, for all of that. Keep up the hard work, especially over the next few years when you continue playing lacrosse. My next athlete is L. Samarakov. L. unfortunately was, able, was not able to participate as much this year, but did come to our senior day and was able to get a forfeit. In her only girls wrestling match, she won by pin. I wish that this year was a little different. I truly believe that Elle could have done something special down in that States. She listened and worked hard and she was always improving. And this is gonna serve her well as she continues her education, she continues her athletic endeavors in college. My final senior is Zachary Shapiro. Zachary is gonna be our team MVP. He went seven and zero and was first team all league. Zachary beat two region wrestlers during our league matches and was always one that I could count on. I'm so happy that he was able to come out for the team last year and he's progressed over these two years. Thank you, Zachary. I appreciate all you've done and wish you well next year. Welcome. All of those who are listening, my name is Coach Alexandris, and I am the head winter track and field coach here at Fairlawn High School. As we all know, the season was a very uncertain one. As the pandemic continued to delay many things in our lives, the season was also put on hold. Our first practice did not begin all the way up until February, and so we were tasked with fitting in a bunch of track meets within a short period of time. This alone was a difficult task but now take into account that many athletes on the team have not practiced or competed in such a very long time, some over a year. This situation called for each individual on the team to have the courage to compete with very little preparation. The team trained hard and diligently and handled every meet with the best of their ability. Each meet we progressed through our short season, athletes were setting personal records, increasing times and distances in their throws and on the track, The objective results and time showed our improvement physically, which was great. However, what was more impressive to me as a coach was to see how close this group got together. It was a collective struggle that they all had in common together, the pandemic. They remained patient, and as the team pushed forward with fortitude in order to make the season happen, I went from seeing some nervous faces on day one to finishing the season with smiles and teammates running across the track cheering on one another at each and every single meet. It was this synergistic push and drive from the team that really made the season a successful one. As we entered our league meet towards the end of the season, we were now a stronger and new team and it truly showed. Usually the league meet is held on one day. However, due to the effort of trying to lower the meet population numbers, the meet director had the girls compete one day and the next day the boys competed. In both cases, the opposite genders still showed up to the meet and cheered on their teammates even though they weren't competing that day. This act showed me how united and together the team truly was. I'm a very proud coach and I'm very proud of everyone and thank you guys for making this a great first year for me. 
I wish everyone the best of luck in the future and those who are coming back. I cannot wait for the season to get started again. Thank you. I would like to take this time and moment to acknowledge the seniors. We appreciate your leadership, hard work, and dedication to the team and sport for this past season and years prior. I would like to start with the girls, Amanda Borges. Amanda competed in both the short sprints as well as the long jump and did a fantastic job at it all. Amanda was very coachable and had the ability to listen, learn, and execute a movement with relative ease. This truly showed how well in tune she was and what a great listener she was as well. I wish you nothing but the best in the future, Amanda. Layla Holly. Layla. She competed in the short sprints as well as the long jump and also did a fantastic job at it all. Layla was a very competitive runner and she was faced with an ankle injury about mid-season. Most would have gave up. However, Layla stayed patient and rehabbed her ankle back to health. She was able to come back from the injury and run fast and jump far. This showed me how truly resilient she is. This type of resiliency will carry you through life. I'm very proud of you and I wish you the very best. Valeria Luke. Val primarily ran the 800 meter and did a great job of it. I remember the first time seeing you run the 800 Val. You were so nervous and admittedly struggled with it at first. Come to see you two weeks later, you are a completely different runner and effortlessly ran the 800 meter with no problems. This showed to me that you can be faced with a struggle at first and then adapt and overcome it. I am proud of you and I wish you the very best. We're gonna move on to the boys. Blake Bomber's back. Blake ran the 1600 meters and did a great job of it. He is a super hardworking young man who wore many hats. He was balancing school, life, working a decent amount of hours per week, all while running for the team. Not only were you able to handle it all, but you excelled while doing it. This ability to balance all hats you had on will certainly pay off as you progress and grow in life. I am proud of the work you put in, Blake, and I wish you nothing but the very best as you move forward. All the best, buddy. Jacob Michaelman. Jacob ran primarily the 3200 and did a great job of it. Jacob was able to pull away with three points in the event at leagues, where he placed fourth in a deep field. He continued throughout the season to train hard and compete at a high level. Jacob gets to practice every day with a smile yet a determined face. Someone who will always give at his very best no matter the circumstance. I like to think of him as the glue to the distance group, keeping things in check and leading the way. I wish you the very best of luck going forward. Alexander Raison. Alex ran primarily 800 meter but also dabbled in the 400 as well which really helped our 4x4 team out. Alex brought a charismatic approach to practice each and every day and helped the synergy of the distance group, whether he knew it or not. Very hardworking, gets the job done, and always puts his best effort forward. I am glad of the progress you made thus far, and I am looking forward to your continued success in this outdoor season. I wish you the very best going forward, buddy. Daniel Rodriguez, aka D-Rod. Primarily ran the 800 and did a wonderful job of it. A very competitive runner, Daniel contributed three points during our league meet where he placed in the 800 meter run. A very talented runner, whom I believe can definitely take his talents to the next level if he does in fact choose to do so. Fast yet smooth, he led the way for his teammates through his actions on the track. I wish you nothing but the best in the future, buddy. Jason Shepatovsky. Jay. Primarily ran the 3200 as well as the 1600 and did a fantastic job at both. Jason has a huge personality and a very positive one. He contributed more than just his physical abilities on the track team. He brought a wave of charisma to each and every practice and every meet. I wish you nothing but the best in the future, buddy. Lastly, Matthew Torres. Matthew primarily run the 400 meter but was also very versatile and could go below to 100 to 200 meters as well as above all the way up to the 1600 meter. This versatility helped tremendously as the season's numbers on the team were very low. Matthew did a wonderful job embracing and adapting his role and contributing in many facets of the sport. Matthew contributed with his photography skills at each and every meet as well, capturing many moments. 
I wish you nothing but the best in the future, buddy. I am now going to take the time to announce the Cutter Award winners. The Cutter Award is awarded to the athlete who leads the way for their teammates and uplifts the team's spirit as a whole. On the boys' side, Matthew Torres, aka the cameraman. Matthew, you've captured so many great moments this year through for your photography skills, and you've been able to light up the faces of many athletes and coaches like myself. These memories that many of us will never forget, we appreciate you for taking. We appreciate you for taking this action as it shows the care and effort you put towards the team and truly being a selfless teammate. As soon as your races were done, you went and grabbed that camera and made sure you got pictures of each event group. Congratulations on your Cutter Award for the 2021 winter track season. On the girls side, Layla Holly. Layla has the ability to light up the team's aura and mood just with her personality. It was her ability to shine her light on the team during these tough days of the pandemic that called for her to be selected for the 2021 Cutter Award. This charismatic light you have will always be your gift, Layla. Thank you for making your teammates smile, be positive, and enjoy the season. Looking forward to the outdoor season. Congratulations on your Cutter Award for the 2021 Winter Track Season. I'm now going to take the time to announce the MVP winners from both the boys and the girls side. The most valuable player is awarded to the athlete who contributes the most value to the team from a performance standpoint. On the girls side, Sarah Mantia. Sarah, just a junior, was a huge help across an array of events, including the hurdles, sprints, and both relays. Scoring just shy of five points this league meet, she did it all, with no complaints, maybe hesitation, I kid but most importantly, with a smile on the whole time. A true leader by nature, without even trying to be one, I know for certain this leadership trait will take you very far in life. I am proud of your performances and leadership this season, Sarah, and I am looking forward to seeing you do more of this outdoor. Congratulations on your MVP title for the 2021 winter track season. On the boys' side, Ethan Weiner, also just a junior, showed tremendous ability in a plethora of events stemming from the jumps all the way down to the sprints. Ethan was the boys' leading point scorer in this year's league meet as he racked up a total of 6 points to lead the boys' side. Ethan is also a fantastic leader for the team and most importantly a great teammate. Great job Ethan, you have huge potential. Congratulations on your MVP title for the 2021 winter track season. Congrats buddy. Sincere thank you to all those involved with coordinating season three for girls volleyball. To my coaching staff, Marlou Zanoria and Caitlin MacGyver, for all their hard work, and to our athletes' parents for all of their support. To say this has been a challenging year would be an understatement. Yet, despite the delayed start to the season, minimal preparation time, constant player quarantines, and playing with masks, the 2021 girls volleyball team overcame all these adversities and had a truly remarkable season. It was a season whereby we displayed our youth and experience at times, but we also demonstrated our potential and brilliance as well. We finished with a strong eight win and five loss season, finishing second in our league and losing a tough first round state matchup to Monmouth. Our Cutter Award recipient goes to a young lady who demonstrated exceptional work ethic, commitment, and positivity throughout the season. She was a great team leader, whether in the lineup or out, in practice, and in every team huddle. She always provided guidance to others and she did everything in her power to set a positive example and be a role model for the younger athletes in the program. Thank you and congratulations to Marianne Perez, this year's Cutter Award recipient. Our team 
team most valuable player goes to a young lady who was the heart and soul of the varsity team. As the starting middle the past three seasons, this young lady had established herself as a force to be reckoned with from both an offensive and defensive standpoint from the middle. However, this year she was willing to play as an opposite setter, two completely different positions due to the inexperience within these areas. She flourished in these new roles and became a stabilizing factor on the court, consistently providing tremendous leadership and encouragement at all times. For her efforts, Sharon Yudez is this year's team MVP. I just want to thank this year's varsity team and especially this senior class for their tremendous work ethic and dedication to this program and to each other. This senior class cultivated a truly positive atmosphere in the gym that helped each and every player on the team flourish and grow throughout the season. Despite it being a shortened season, after being off the court for over a year, the 2021 girls volleyball season truly has been one of the most rewarding and gratifying experiences ever. I want to thank each of my seniors from the bottom of my heart, Sharon Yudez, Olivia Lombardo, Marianne Perez, and Catherine Phillips for all of their contributions throughout their tenure with the program, and I wish each of them the very best in their future endeavors. Hi there, my name is Carly Harper and I'm the newly hired head coach for Fairlawn High School dance team. I must say it's been quite a journey as I did get hired at the end of what is a regular high school dance team season, but where there is a will, there is a way. I'm so incredibly proud of the dancers that I've been working with this season. They jumped right on it when information went out about virtual auditions. They were fantastic. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little tricky because we were working on Zoom before meeting in person. So they learned a lot of choreography online. Like that's incredible within itself. They stepped up to the plate. They are just honestly such hardworking girls and I could not be more proud of them. We've had a lot of time to be able to also focus on conditioning in person, which is great. You know, because the season is a little different this year, we did unfortunately miss regular high school dance team competitions, but we are going to be attending studio-based competitions. A little different, but still get the opportunity to perform, to compete. We are so incredibly thrilled. We're looking forward to having a team dinner together. And honestly, again, I'm just super proud of each and every one of the dancers I've had the pleasure of working with, meeting with. And I honestly look forward to growth on and off the dance floor for the remainder of this season. Again, so, so proud of my girls and can't wait to work with them again. So Julia Scro is one of our captains this season. She is affectionately known as Juju. Absolutely love her. So proud of her and how far she's come this season. She's been on the team since she was a freshman. She did unfortunately have knee surgery this season. So she did start off with practicing, stepped out to have that surgery. And guess what? She came back nice and strong, super fantastic, ready to work. She came back to practice about three three days after her surgery or so, and she was supporting us, cleaning our routines. Again, just such, such a great asset to our team, and she really is motivating and encouraging to every team member. So, so proud of her. We love our Juju. Another one of our seniors is Faith Kwasnick. She is our second captain this season. Super, super dedicated to the team. She has also been on the team since her freshman year. She's a super talented dancer. Again, she really is a true leader and leads by example when it comes to leadership and showmanship and really what it takes to be part of a team. Super proud of her and her growth and I'm gonna miss her so much. 
Another one of our seniors is Maylin Hernandez. She has such spunk. I absolutely love her personality, so much fun. She is such a great team member and she really is just so motivating with her positive energy, her good vibes every single practice. She is 120% dedicated to her team and we absolutely love her. And our final senior is Omer Benhamo. She has grown so much this season super proud of her dedication she's always the first one to practice she's the last one to leave she truly loves her teammates and our inside joke with her is that she's always singing the music to every single song that we play during practice whether it's warm-up or our actual routine she's always singing and we absolutely love it again so super proud of every single one of our seniors they have been nothing but supportive to every single team member and we're gonna miss them so 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 much but we wish them nothing but the best on their future endeavors for the 2020-2021 Fairlawn High School dance team season, the Cutter Award is going to a very special senior dancer. This dancer arrived early to practice every single time and she was the last one to leave as she would help me carry things to my car. She would also make sure she arrived early so she can practice choreography and ask questions to me. She would also sing every single lyric <laughs> to every single song in our routines just to make sure she kept the good energy for her teammates and she was absolutely supportive to everyone on the team during practice as well as outside of practice and just supporting her family as she calls us affectionately this year's cutter award is going to omar benhama For the 2020-2021 Fairlawn High School dance team season, the MVP award is going to a very special senior dancer. Of course, all of our team members showed dedication, respect, great energy to each other, to the coaching staff, and to themselves. This one particular dancer went above and beyond when it came to attending her teammates emotionally, and I'm just so super proud of her. She did have knee surgery and was unable to participate for a good portion of our already unconventional season, but a week after having her surgery, she came to practice. I can only imagine the emotions she felt as she could not physically participate, but she still gave great feedback for our team as we were practicing and recording for our intended virtual dance competition. Again, truly proud of her, and this MVP award is going out to co-captain Julia Scro. Good evening, my name is Jamie Zember. I am the director of the Farallon High School Marching Band, Indoor Percussion, and Color Guards programs. This year was a year, as everybody knows, unlike many other. And uh, unfortunately, we did not have our typical competitive seasons that we normally would have due to the circumstances and the timing and everything. So I thought I would take this time to thank the seniors for all their four years of dedication to the programs and to all the accomplishments and accolades that they have achieved over these past four years. The Color Guard, Indoor Color Guard, were 2018 WGI South Brunswick Regional Color Guard Champions. In 2018, they were the main Scholastic Regional A bronze medalists. In 2019, they were promoted up a class to Scholastic AA. The Indoor Percussion in 2018 was promoted to open class on the National WGI stage and finished 
with a high of fourth place in the world in open class at WGI World Championships in Dayton, Ohio. The marching band has had several years of top five finishes at national championships held at MetLife Stadium in the U.S. band circuit. These seniors have been amazing and helped rise this program to new levels. And I will always be thankful for their contributions. So I would like to thank Kaylin, Amadea, Gil, Anavi, Sydney Antonoff, Max Antonoff, Gianna Barone, Marissa Defino, Giovanna Galetti, Victoria Mazur, Ahmad Martin, Charles Schackinger, Esther Soka, Angel Vargas, and Barry Walker for all that you have done for these programs. And I wish you the best of luck in your future years and please come back and visit. Thank you so much for everything you've done for the programs here at Fairlawn High School. In closing, I'd like to thank our parents, coaches, and athletes for their tireless hard work and commitment to our programs. Again, I'd like to thank Mr. Gorski, Ms. Matiner, and Dr. Bosco for all their support, and special thanks to Dr. B for all the hard work producing this video for tonight's viewing. Again, Thank you for everything and good luck in the spring season.